All right, here we go. Let's check out the next section here. Just a quick reminder before we start, this is definitely part of the no calculator zone. This unit, again, no calculator. Uh, we're doing all with a big brain. Let's get this rolling. We're going to talk about multiply and divide rational numbers. You may recognize that cover. You know who loves to do this? Ed Sheeran. Dude loves to divide. Named one of his albums after it. I think he named one multiply. Dude just loves to do this stuff. That's great. There's Ed Sheeran rocking a shirt. Don't get him confused with this guy who also loves to do it. Bread Sheeran right there rocking out. I love it. All right, here we go. Let's get this thing rolling here. So last time we just did integers. Now we're going to do multiplication with fractions. So our same negative rules apply. We're just going to go ahead and say, hey, man, how do you multiply fractions? So this is so much easier than adding or subtracting. Why is it easier? Because we're just going to multiply across the top of the fraction. Then we're going to multiply across the bottom of the fraction. So the top of the fraction, a little vocab here, is the numerator. So I'll refer to it as the numerator. And then the bottom is the denominator. And we knew that from last time because we were getting that common denominator. Ooh, that's terrible handwriting. There we go. Uh, we don't need a common denominator. It's just we're going to say what is one half of seven eighths. We're going to straight up multiply across the top. So one times seven is seven. Two times eight is 16. Boom, I'm done. That is it. Oh my gosh, I love this section. Let's go again. So three fifths times three fourths. Multiply across the top. Three times three is nine. Multiply across the bottom. Five times four is 20. Rock and roll. There we go. We're going to throw parentheses. Remember, this means multiplication. There's a little dot in there. Same thing, though. Don't worry about common denominator. Just go ahead and do it. So 2 times 5 is 10. And then on bottom, 3 times 2 is 6. So this one's a little bit more work. Why? we got to reduce that bad boy. So what number divides 10 and 6? Well, you can divide both of these by 2. So really, that is 5 thirds. I'm totally cool with improper fractions. I think they're easier to use. They're easier to multiply, to add, subtract, all these different things. If you're really up for it and want to do the mixed number thing, totally cool. Just don't mess it up when you do it. I don't want you to lose easy points. Three goes into five one time, and there's two left over. So either one of these is cool, but I am totally down with improper fractions if you want to leave the first one. Awesome. Then the finale here. So I may mix in some signs in here. So is it positive or negative? So right off the bat, I just go ahead and say, what is my answer going to be? I have a positive times a negative. So what's my answer? It's got to be a negative. So go ahead and just fill that in. Then do your regular old multiplication. So 2 times 3 is 6. On bottom, 7 times 5, 35. He's not going to reduce. There's his answer right there. All right, moving on here. Okay, the other thing that can happen is sometimes we have a regular whole number, an integer, uh, and we're going to multiply it by a fraction. So don't freak out. The same rules apply. Uh, like this first one, we have 3 times 4 fifths. Don't worry, every number is a fraction. So a whole number, I know this is 3, but really it's what? It's 3 divided by 1, which is just 3. So you can think of any number as a fraction. What is 5? It's really 5 divided by 1, or 6. It's five, 6 divided by 1, 19, 19 divided by 1. So everybody's a fraction. We can write any, any whole number as a fraction. So I can really write this as 3 over 1. So if you like, you can rewrite the problem. It's going to be 3 over 1 times 4 over 5, and then I'm going to go ahead and do my rules now. So just write 3 as 3 over 1. Awesome. So 3 times 4 is 12, and 5 times 1 is 5. So 12 over 5. Again, you can make it a mixed number. I'm totally down with that, but I'm really cool with just leaving it as an improper fraction. Awesome. Let's try the next one. So if you don't want to rewrite it, you can just say this is 6 over 1. I know it's kind of diagonal, but can you still do the top? 6 times 2 on top is 12. 1 times 3 on bottom is 3. Now we got to finish this out. What is 12 divided by 3? This is 4. And again, you're reducing this fraction. You're reducing it to 3 divides both of them to 4 over 1, which 4 over 1 is just 4. So I would like you to get all the way down to that 4 um, there. Okay, so one more. Again, I threw in some negatives in this last one here. So what is 3 fourths of negative 2? If you want to rewrite it, it's going to be our 3 fourths. And then negative 2 is going to be negative 2 over 1. So you can rewrite it with parentheses or dot, the dot, whatever you prefer. Can't talk this morning. Uh, but it's a negative. So I look at this, a positive times a negative. So my answer is going to be negative. So right off the bat, figure out what the sign is going to be because I'm multiplying. And then go ahead and do your rules. 3 times 2 is 6. Boom. 4 times 1 is 4. I get 6 fourths. I just need to reduce this. So that's a great answer. But what number divides 6 and 4? Well, 2 does. I can divide them both by 2. So this is really negative. 
three halves right there. Again, if you want to make it the mixed number, I'm totally down with negative one and one half if you prefer mixed numbers. But again, improper fractions just easier to use, so I'm going to leave them improper. Awesome, halfway there. Look at that. I'm using a fraction in a fraction video. Halfway done. Awesome. So let's talk division. Remember, dividing is just unmultiplying. That's it. So uh, how are we going to do this? Well, to unmultiply, we're actually going to multiply. That's so weird. To divide, I'm actually going to multiply. What does that mean? We are going to flip the second fraction and multiply. So we got to know this rule for dividing fractions. Sometimes it's called multiplying. As you write it down, I'll write it down the other way, the fancy math way is you can multiply by the reciprocal. And maybe you've come across that term before. The reciprocal is when you flip the fraction upside down. So I'm going to flip the second fraction and multiply. Please rewrite these. You just make way less mistakes. If you take one second to say, hey, what is 3 fourths divided by 7 fifths? To find this out, we're going to go 3 fourths times 5 sevenths. It's always the second fraction. It's always what you're dividing by. That second fraction right there, that's a terrible looking arrow. Can I save it? I don't know, can I save it? Uh, it's getting better, it's getting better. Okay, it's still rough. It's that second fraction, that's the key, is I wanted to I want to flip the second fraction. I'm gonna say it as many times as I can. Flip the second fraction. Okay, let's multiply it out. So what is three times five? It's 15. What is four times seven? 28. I don't think that reduces. There's not a number that divides both of them. Boom, I'm done. Awesome. Get to say it again. What do we do? We, I, we had to divide. One fifth divided by three tenths. Flip the second fraction. So the first one stays exactly the same, but I'm going to flip 10 over 3. or 3 over 10 becomes 10 over 3. So flip it upside down and multiply. Now I can just do my rule for multiplication. 1 times 10 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. Just be careful because this one actually reduces. I know 5 divides in both, so 5 goes in 10 two times. 5 goes in 15 three times. So reduce it down to its simplest terms. There it is right there. Awesome. Let's check out this bad boy at the end. So again, if I was going to divide these two, negative two-thirds divided, I see some negatives in here, so I'm going to go right off the bat. Hey, what's the sign? What's my answer going to be? My answer must be a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I know I'm going to have a positive answer. Now let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to take the second to rewrite it. So if you can multiply fractions, you can divide them. It's the same thing. So what is this? If I divide by that, remember, you're going to flip the second fraction, so that becomes 5 over 4. And then now we can multiply. So now I know a negative times a negative is a positive. And then I'm going to do my rule. 2 times 5 is 10. And then 3 times 4 is 12. Awesome. Very nice. So does this reduce? Sure. Uh, 2 goes into both of these. 2 goes into 10 5 times. 2 goes into 12 6 times. There's my answer. That is really 5 6. Holy cow, that's awesome. Very nice. All right, let's wrap this bad boy up. We are going to divide now a whole number, an integer, a positive negative integer or whole number, by a fraction. So same thing. We're going to make this 3 over 1. And the only difference here is I'm going to rewrite this. Remember, flip your second fraction. This becomes 9 over 4. And then I can multiply. Awesome. So multiply across the top. 3 times 9 is 27. 1 times 4 is 4. 27 fourths. Fantastic. Same thing on the next one. Uh, I love it. So just think of this as also as a fraction. So take the time to rewrite it. I can't stress it enough. Rewrite it, flip the second fraction, and we're going to say 3 over 7 becomes 7 over 3. So really we're looking at what? 6 times 7 is 42. 1 times 3 is 3. I think you can actually divide these. I think uh, what? It goes into there what? 14 times? 14 times. So again, you can write 14 over 1 which is really just 14. Fantastic. What if the uh, integer is the second number, though? So you're supposed to flip the second fraction. Oh, wait, before we even start, a positive divided by a negative is going to be what? This answer is going to be negative because the signs are different. So I know I leave the first fraction alone. I'm going to multiply. Can I flip this? Well, sure. It's really negative 2 over 1. So when I flip it, it's going to be 1 over negative 2. So don't freak out. Everything's that fraction. You can still flip it and multiply it. So really on top, 5 times 1 becomes 5. 8 times 2 becomes negative 16. And again, that negative sign could be out in front. It's the same thing as negative 5 over 16. Or you could put that negative sign on top, negative 5 over 16. They're all the same thing. As long as one of them is negative, you're cool. All right, excellent. That is it for this section. Good luck on the mastery check. I hope you're ready for it. Oh, peace out. Keep it real.